Hey everybody, welcome back to the Game Domain YouTube channel. I'm here back today with Domain Legion, and we're doing another podcast today regarding the PlayStation 5 reveal that just happened as of late. Uh, guys, today I'm joined here today with Sam. Hello, I'm Club Sam. I am mainly a Twitch streamer, but I do also do a few things on YouTube. Alright. And... Oh, keep going, Sam, no problem. Oh, um, also my... Twitch and YouTube are Club Sam. Alright, everybody, so you heard it uh, from Sam. And I'm also here joined today by Mr. Melon. Oh, hi. Yeah, I do uh, stuff on the internet sometimes. That's good enough, I think. You want to plug your socials, man? <laughs> Not really, no. <laughs> Alright. Um, so, yeah, uh, PlayStation 5 reveal happened pretty early. Uh, well, not that early, but, you know, earlier in the day, I guess you could say. Um, you know, we all have our opinions. Uh, does anyone want to go first, or should I start off with my opinion first? Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, why not? Just go with it. All right, so to me personally, when I look at the uh, PS5 reveal, um, games-wise, when it came to graphics, I think the most prettiest game, in my opinion, was Gran Turismo 7 from Polyphony Digital. Uh, Gran Turismo 7 is a racing, sim the real racing simulator, you know, the the tagline GT had for a while. And it was on PS4, uh, GT Sport, but the main focus of the GT games previously was more about, like, uh, having, like, over a hundred different types of cars to collect and race within different series and all that stuff. Um, but GT Sport took it into a different direction with it being more focused with esports, I guess you could say where uh, people would compete with each other in, uh, you know, GT3 class, uh, touring car classes, stuff like that. I think even a little bit of F1 car made it in there. And they were picked up by real um, racing factory teams like Nissan and stuff. But GT7 seems to be going back to the older Gran Turismo games that we like to play, you know, with the whole, like, big car customization going on. Uh, there was a really nice um, Aston Martin DB11, I think, that was being shown off in the trailer. And in the CGI trailer that was at the very beginning, you could see the interior of what I believe is a two of a uh, four GT, the one from like the two thousand uh, mid two thousands era four GT, not the new one. And the graphics to me looked pretty pretty good, pretty good. Um, but that also leads into something else I want to say too was um, the big graphical leaps I've seen before from like let's say um, Nintendo sixty four to GameCube or PlayStation two to PlayStation three, you know stuff like that, or to a lesser extent. Nintendo GameCube to the Nintendo Wii. I just didn't see that much of a huge leap this generation around, you know, from PS4 to PS5. I mean, yeah, the games do look prettier technically. They do have to. I mean, it's more powerful, right? But I just don't see that big graphical jump anymore. And I don't think we are going to get that big graphical jump anymore. I mean, maybe we need to wait and see until, like, your first-party title comes out from Sony, you know, something that's in-house, like the new God of War sequel, something like that, or a new Metal Gear maybe. But um, to me personally, the graphics, eh, they look nice, but a little underwhelmed. Do uh, you guys have anything uh, you want to say about that, or no? Nah? Well, I, 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 honestly, I think you're a little bit right and wrong. It's like, on the surface level, you're right, but when you go underneath the hood of the uh, PS5, mm -hmm. what they're bringing for uh, specs is just amazing. Like, even the Xbox Series X misses out on a few key, like, few key components, uh, I think I think this week or last week, Linus Tech Tips had a, like a little snafu where he uh, misinformed his viewers, saying that it's just an SSD. But if you actually went into the, um, the uh, I can't remember exactly what it was, but there's actually like a press release. If you actually go into it, the way the PS5's SSD works, it's going to revolutionize how compression works and how we access the game data. It's going to be way quicker than what even the PC has, and it's going to change the market tremendously on how games are gamed it's gonna i, I really do think like kind of jokingly the ps5 is going to quote unquote kill the pc for like a moment until the pc comes up because the pc is held off back by legacy hardware legacy software from you know windows ps5 has the the, the ability to start fresh every generation the, the the specs are amazing i mean you have a uh, eight zen 2 cores at 3.5 gigahertz that's something that's going to cost, I think that the Zen, Zen 2 at eight, eight, uh, 8 cores cost you about $300. I mean, these aren't going to be comparable. These are SOCs that AMD makes. 
but still these are these are going to be like a 600 700 computer in like a 400 500 package these that's impressive stuff and like sure maybe it's not going to be amazing visually right now because i mean you're going from like 100 to 150 percent googly eye you know amazing graphics not really noticeable but when you go from zero to ten it's much more noticeable increase but i think what we're gonna be seeing is we're gonna see much faster load times much you know sleeker graphics and it's gonna be a lot less power consuming which is like really key and uh one, one way we're gonna notice that is uh well the ps5 and the xbox series x uses the same very similar uh technology i mean they're both using amd one chose to go for more uh, compute units for their uh, GPU. The other is going for more boost frequency. PS5 is going for more boost frequency, which means they're trying to keep it cool in a box for like four years or five years or whatever the generational length is, just to make sure that device runs cool, runs, you know, power, not, not as power hungry and runs smooth. P Xbox Series X, on the other hand, it's going for more compute units, which could be more heat longer term it's it's difficult to say but my biggest issue right now i think is xbox series x even though it has better specs on cpu gpu its storage capacity is just trash and i, I think and i'm talking about too much of the xbox series x i'm sorry that's not the focus but i think sure maybe on the surface level i'm wrapping this up real quick surface level yeah the graphics aren't there maybe not yet but i think there's definitely lots of room to expand in sam uh you want to say anything in that regard um, yeah, but more so about the SSD. So, if you remember, there was, um, a new Ratchet and Clank game, I think it was called Rift Apart. Yeah. Right? And basically, the main mechanic of the game, of course, is interdimensional travel. And for that, of course, you need to have, like, a fast SSD, and, of course, that's kind of where the PS5 SSD comes into play, and... Of course, the game also looks just like the details. The amount of details they've put on there is quite phenomenal. Um, yeah, I don't really have too much to add. All right, no problem. Um, I'll take it back a little bit here. Um, Melon, you know, you were talking about some like new uh, technology with the SSD, right? Yeah. Now. I'm not sure if this is related or not, but maybe it is, and you seem to be more knowledgeable about this than I am. But um, I saw this kind of, this little tech demo, and bringing it back to the Xbox, shout out to the Xbox fanboys in the chat. Um, it was on the, uh, I think it was on the next generation Xbox that's coming out or something. They were pausing a game or something, and they were booting up another game at the exact same time, and it seemed to work flawlessly. Is that some of the new tech uh, that we're going to be seeing in the uh, PS5? Do you know anything about that, Melon? I have no idea what you're referring to because I, I only uh, kind of focus on the scope of the PS5. But um, it, how long ago was this? Did you uh, do you for so? It was like around four months ago. I want to say four. Oh yeah, yeah. I wonder what it was. That's curious because that sounds really interesting. I mean, whatever the Xbox Series X is capable. The PS5 should be capable of doing definitely, yeah. maybe with a, because they're almost identical and everything except for thorough put, and that's where the PS5 takes over completely. And so I don't see the Xbox Series X being pegged this early on in its generation before it's even out. So absolutely, PS5 could do, unless there's some secret sauce. <laughs> hey, you never know. There could be, could be some uh some secret Taco Bell sauce in there. Do you guys remember when uh the the PS4 came out? Taco Bell was giving away those uh, free PS4s for every like. 5,000th entry or something. <laughs> oh, right. And yeah, then, like, it I turned out, know. like, 60% of those PS4s were, like, on non-operational. What a um, great time. You just, yeah. yeah, you just don't put them in the fryer later, and they would probably have been better off. But, you know, don't yeah. tell Taco Bell that. L yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are not sponsored by Taco Bell, but who knows, maybe one day. Maybe one day. Um, Moving on, Uh, let's see. I'm going to bring up a new category here for us, guys. I'm going to call it uh, the biggest surprise of the conference. To me, the biggest uh, surprise announcement for me was Village, a.k.a. Resident Evil 8, I believe. Um, when I saw that trailer, I really didn't get a Resident Evil vibe. Not at all. Nothing at all from that. I just thought it was like some sort of like, oh, you're some dude like stuck in some weird like uh, town. You're the outsider. Everyone knows a dark secret they don't want to tell you. 
there's like some Cthulhu slash like uh, werewolf man or like the rake Wendigo type of monster haunting the area. You know, you got to watch out. You got to like warn the other villagers, but the villagers are like in a cult or some crazy BS. And then at the end, like, oh my God, Chris Redfield, like, what are you doing here, dude? <laughs> and like, he just, you know, kills somebody with like a USB 45. And I'm just like, this is a Resident Evil game. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Yeah, that's the strange thing about Resident Evil. They're always um trying to re like re re rebuild themselves in different genres, like in different game types, all the time. You can like look back. I think Resident Evil Four did a similar thing, and then they had like that weird multiplayer Resident Evil like Red vs Blue type game with you. Oh, was it the, uh, um, Raccoon City? Was it <laughs> or something like that? It, there's, there's always these. They're always trying to reinvent themselves, like every couple of games. So. Honestly, I, I it it does sound surprising, but I don't. When you really think about it, it's really not because that's just what they do. Sam, you want to say anything in that regard? Uh, no, I don't really have. Like the okay, I forgot what that one game was that like I was um emotional shocked about, but like one of the games that I do like fondly remember was like dead loop and the idea of it um it's an interesting idea where it's like 70s themed and um like it's kind of a uh, repeating gra- like ground out day pretty much um and the idea of trying to escape a time loop that's also quite interesting about that yeah, I saw a little bit about it um, during the conference. Definitely an interesting, probably going to be an interesting game mechanic. You know, you're looping in a death sequence, right? So who knows? Maybe, like, you die, you don't lose some of your tech or, like, your items you have, or you don't. We don't know how the game works out yet, but definitely an interesting concept. Um, yeah, until then, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, what else from Resident Evil? Um, Some people say, I don't know if I agree with them or not, but... Some people say, hey, that castle looks eerily familiar to the castle from Resident Evil 4. That village looks familiar like Resident Evil 4. And some people are putting out this rumor that, hey, this is related to the new Resident Evil 4 uh, remake that's being uh, made currently in development. Um, I don't know if they're right or wrong, honestly. I, I personally think it's not related. I think it's just a standalone game, but I don't know. It might be related or not. Um, do you guys have any uh, favorite games you want to talk about from the conference? Uh, <laughs> not really. They're oh, all no, kind of. No. They're, they're all kind of meant for like, you guys. <laughs> they're all Sony uh, games. They're all. They always have the same thing. Like I mean, I guess there's like the new Spider-Man game. But, I mean, yeah, they basically kind of just expanded on um all the impressive tech that was in, um the previous Spider-Man game. And of course with ray tracing being there, um definitely adds to the game's beauty for sure. For me the games, uh I mean, you know, they're there. Um not really uh that hyped about it, you know. Uh me, I'm a motorsport guy, so GT seven rings the bell for me. Um, the Hitman, uh, Hitman 3, I think, is the one that got announced. That one caught my eye, too, but, uh, the majority of the games didn't really do it for me. Like, I know there was some indies being showcased as well, but I, I don't really, you know, pay attention much to that type of stuff, and some indie games to me seem like, uh, like a, uh, the creator went to a movie producer, showed him a script, and they got rejected, so they thought, hey, might as well make it into a video game. That's kind of how I see some indie games, so, yeah. Um, moving on, um... What do you guys think about the actual PS5, the actual unit itself, the style of it? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it does look like a Wi-Fi router, for sure. Like, I... There are, like, a lot of people saying that it looked like one. And... I also... Like, another thing that it looked like was, like... Do you know what Vocaloids are? Like the... Like that Hatsune Miku chick, right? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Yeah, but there's this one Vocaloid called Kaito, and basically, like, the design, like, especially, like, a jacket 
or the PS5 resembles like his jacket pretty much. And I uh, also um it's nice that they announced like a new camera but I don't know what the remote that is coming with it is gonna be used for. Yeah, I mean I think it looks neat. It's it's definitely them stepping away from having like a consumer electronic look like the PS2 had and cuz that's like how like game consoles always developed. They're always square boxes. Now they're trying to give like a a nice architectural look with the sweep the sweeping lines and stuff. The Xbox still looks like a piece of crap in my opinion, but <laughs> looks like a giant Lego brick, but whatever. Uh whatever, man. I don't care. I'm not going to buy either thing. Probably not. I mean, unless there's some killer app that I want, but you know, have your um, have your fancy tech looking cool. I don't care. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, though, I'm already a PC gamer, and um, there's no going back from it. I don't know. There is no going back, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Anyways, um, my thoughts on it. Um, to me, it it reminds me of uh, like uh, early uh, let's see. Well, I, I guess I can't put an exact date on it, but back when uh, the Xbox One and the PS4 were still being conceptualized by the masses and the developers and the engineers and stuff at Sony and Microsoft, there was a lot of mock-ups, a lot of them. You know, for the Xbox 720, you know, everyone remembers that. And for the PlayStation 4, a bunch of really wacky, weird mock-ups about the consoles, and they were really really fun to look at you know they're kind of cool kind of stupid in some yeah. regards and the, oh, yeah, especially the horseshoe yeah and the the ps5 to me it looks like one of those concepts that actually made it into the production line and i'm, I'm totally fine with that i'm totally fine with that it, it looks weird but i like it i mean at the end of the day it my it may get it may take like a bit of time to get used to but um, like all other new things, like people will eventually get used to it, and eventually they may start to like it. Yeah, definitely. Um, oh, damn, I think, I think it was, um, GTA 5, there we go. I wasn't a big fan of it at the start, but, you know over the months became quite a big fan of it but uh, that's also uh, another thing that came up in the conference i forgot um gta 5 is being ported over once again to another console to the playstation 5 um i don't know if you guys play gta 5 at all uh, sam melon yeah i've played it yeah i will i bit. mean i would but like um and my parents are concerned <laughs> No problem, no problem. Um, you know, we saw it originally on 360 and PS3. Then we saw it ported over to PS4 and Xbox, right? And now we're seeing another port to the PS5 and Xbox Next Gen, whatever the heck it's called. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, honestly, like, the game was built for 360 in mind. I'm not really expecting it to look that much better over the PS4 and Xbox One ports that we have, which aren't even that much you know better when it comes to you know frame rate wise online but um well actually they are better than the than the 360 edition and the ps3 definitely but um i think uh i think there's a lot of uh fps problems per se when it comes to the online mode at least for the base model um ps4 and uh, xbox one i think the xbox uh one uh, x and the ps4 pro do a better job about it though when you go online because I know for me, I have the PS4 base model. I don't have the Pro. But I'm not going to waste my money on that. It's like buying a Sega Genesis 32X. Like, come on. Um, I do have some trouble with, uh, you know, frame rates online, definitely. And, you know, the graphics kind of take a dip. So hopefully uh, on the next gen PS5 and the new Xbox edition, they kind of figure that stuff out finally. But I think the most optimal way to play, I think you guys are going to agree with me, is on PC. Yeah. I guess. I guess. <laughs> I mean, you can, like, adjust a lot of things in it. 
and I remember there's this one video of someone using like a ten thousand dollar PC and and like adding quite a lot of effects to it and making it look like very much um realistic. But yeah. A bunch of like uh, mods to it. Yeah, a lot of mods. I, I always remember. Si to... Oh, go ahead, Melon. Sorry. Right. Um, I think one way they're gonna rectify the um, online issues is, from what I heard, they're breaking away GTA Five and its online component to two separate games. So it should like like it make it a little bit more sleek. Oh, to okay. Play on the PS Five oh. and whatever, whatever, whatever you want to play it on. I think that is a better yeah. idea, man. Well, yeah, absolutely. I think. You know what isn't a good idea though. Uh, Fortnite being on the PlayStation Five as well. That too, but um, <laughs> Oppressor Mark Twos. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him so much. If you play GTA Five, and if you've ever been griefed by a Mark Two, then you know what I'm talking about. If you have one though, then well, have fun. I guess have fun. Um. You guys want to bring up anything uh, specific to the reveal or the PS5 you want to say? Uh, not much, but I mean, the only thing is just that there's um, just the amount of shapes on screen, like especially during the transition. Yeah, nothing really uh, worth mentioning, I don't think, that I've already even said. All right, everybody, uh, we are out of time here. Uh, thank you for listening in once again to the Domain Legion podcast. I was joined today by Sam and Melon. And everyone, thank you for watching, and we will catch you guys later. Peace out, everybody.